How many people have ever um, been in a disorganization? <laughs> well, isn't that interesting? Everybody knows what it is. Um, we once were trying to sort of figure out, well, what is it like? Well, here you got it. Um, people apathetic. Don't show up for stuff. Um, passive. Uh, there's divisions. And I don't mean divisions like uh, differences of opinion, but the kinds of divisions that paralyze action. Uh, the kinds of factions that, uh, well, you may know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a sense of drift. Uh, there's reactiveness. Uh, people can't make decisions, but they, if, if the, uh, something affects them, they run around like chickens with their heads cut off, like, oh, what do we do? And finally, they may have resources, but the resources are not engaged. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Now, and, and if your power depends on collective action, it's more than frustrating. You're leaking power all over the place because your source of power is not there. Now, we did then, OK, what would the promised land be like? Uh, you know, the place that really works. Here we are. Instead of apathy, there's motivation. People are engaged. They're motivated. They show up for meetings. Uh, instead of division, there's the capacity to act together, the capacity to actually debate, argue, but then act together. Instead of drift, there's a sense of purpose. Instead of reactiveness, there's a capacity to take initiative. And instead of the inertia of inaction, there's actually effective action toward change. So what's the difference? Why, what does it take to move one into the other? Uh, we once had 43 boycott cities all over North America during the great boycott that I was involved with, the farm workers. And we asked ourselves, why do some work and others don't work? And, um, there were a lot of theories, like where the churches are strong, where the students are strong, where the unions are strong. We found exceptions to everything except one thing that didn't. And here revealed for the first time, oh, it's leadership. OK. <laughs> what we learned was the question was not leadership in the sense of um, smiling personality or you know, charisma, but it was certain kinds of work that was being done. And if there was motivation instead of apathy or inertia, it was because someone had, they'd figured out how to, how to access their values for the emotional resources for courage and action through the telling of stories. That's kind of the whole role of narrative, is that capacity to access sources of hope, sources of courage, and sources of connection. If there was unity instead of division, it was because someone was working at building relationships with intentionality. Because relationship building is really the foundation of organizing work. Lateral relationships, that's how you get to collective capacity. Not by a bunch of individuals just acting as individuals. It's the relational capacity and the learning that comes from relationships. If they were, they were able to act with purpose instead of drift, they developed a structure that enabled them to make decisions, to coordinate what they were doing, to follow through, and not simply react. If there was initiative instead of, uh, instead of reaction, there was strategizing going on. And finally, if there was change instead of inertia, they'd figured out how to turn their resources into clear, measurable action that amounted to change in the world, whether it was votes or money or people or whatever it happened to be.